Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'm going to show you how Avada layout elements work, and I'll go through the specific elements and explain where you can use them. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. Let's start with the Layout Builder page on the Avada Dispensary pre-built website. As we can see, there are a variety of layouts here. For more information on layouts generally, please see our Avada Layouts documentation linked below. Layouts and their assigned layout sections act as a template that can be global when added to the global layout, or can be used on various custom post types, or even just on selected posts or pages, etc., when added to a conditional layout. Because layouts are templates, they mostly contain dynamic content. And so when editing layout sections, you will find a variety of layout elements, which show up on different content layout sections where suitable. Let's look at the single post layout here, and I'll just edit the single post content layout section to have a look at the layout elements used here. As we can see, it's an interesting design with three main sections, a hero, a content, and a comment section. At this point, we can clearly see it's a template, and perhaps it's a bit difficult to imagine what this would look like with real content. So let's preview the layout with some dynamic content. I'll just head to the Layout section Options and the Layout section tab, and choose to view the dynamic content as a post. And I'll just pick a specific post, and then click Preview. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see a specific post to show us what the layout will look like on the front end. The top part of the page is the header from the global layout, and under this is our content layout section as this layout didn't have a page title bar layout section. It begins in the first container here, and here we can see it's all design elements pulling dynamic content. Then comes the content area, and again in the first column there's a bunch of design elements pulling dynamic content. In the next column we can see a layout element at work, with the post content being pulled by the content element, and another layout element in the section below, displaying comments in the comment form. At the bottom of the page we're seeing the footer layout section, again from the global layout. Content layout sections will vary widely depending on the post type you're working with and your general design style. If we come back to the top and go to add an element, the elements window opens to the layout elements tab. Here we can see all the layout elements, including a large range of WooCommerce layout elements as well. This first group of layout elements are usually used when building post or portfolio layout sections, and the remainder are the Woo layout elements. You can of course also use any of the design elements in any of your layout sections. Just remember this is a template, so in most cases you'll want elements with dynamic content. So like this layout, you'll probably build your layout section from a range of both design and layout elements. Layout elements are dynamic, and so pull data based on the element and the layout conditions in the layout they are added to. So as this is a single post layout, and the conditions are set for it to be used on all single posts, the content element, for example, will pull the single post content when this layout is used. Likewise, if we added the author or featured images slider, it would pull the relevant content for the single post. OK, so now let's go through the layout section elements one at a time, to get a better idea of how they can be used. The first one is the archives element. This element is for an archive content layout, like blog or portfolio archives. As you can see, it has a general and a design tab, and is very similar to the blog element. If you want more flexibility with your archives, use the postcard archives element instead. We would not use an archive element on a single post layout like this, and if we did, it just wouldn't render anything. On an archives layout, however, the archives element would be used to determine the layout on the archives pages set in the layout conditions. So you're never going to use all of these elements in one place. They're there to help generate the content section of the page in various layouts like posts, portfolio items, products, archives, and search results, etc. The next one is the author element. This has a general and an extras tab and a range of simple options. You would only use this element with the type of content that has a single author, like a single post layout such as this. If we added the author element to an archive layout, for example, it wouldn't show anything, as there can be many authors on a blog. But on a blog single post layout, the author element is quite useful, and pulls the details from the post author's bio and displays them. An author section has been added to the next column down, but here the designer has added it manually, perhaps for some more flexibility, using a range of design elements pulling the information dynamically. 
Then we have the comments element. It pulls comments from any single post type with commenting enabled and also displays a comment form. You can change the order of these two things and there is a design and an extras tab with a range of styling options. Commenting is typically only enabled on blog posts but it can be enabled on any single post type such as portfolios, FAQs and even pages. Following this is the content element which is found in the right column in the container above. This pulls the main content from any single custom post type. This could be blog post content as it's pulling here or a portfolio item, a page or any other custom post type single post. It wouldn't be used on anything dynamically generated like an archive or 404 or search results layout. There are options for showing the full content or just an excerpt as well as a few design options and element animation options. Featured images slider is the next element and this will pull the featured image or images from any custom post type they are on. These would normally be blog single posts, portfolio posts, but also FAQ items and even single pages. There are a few options around the image hover type and size, and you can control margins as well. If you had only one featured image, you could also use the image element dynamically pulling the featured image. Pagination is the next layout element, and it has a range of layout options under the general tab, and the ability to keep the pagination to the same taxonomy terms, as well as a design tab for styling, and the extras tab with animation options. See the how to use pagination video for full details on pagination, linked below. The postcard archives element is next. This element is like the archives element on steroids and is used in conjunction with postcards to display archives in archive layouts. For more info on postcards, see the how to use postcards in Avada video, linked below. There are two more postcard layout elements, but you will only see them when editing a postcard. I've got a postcard open here, and if I go to add an element to this, we can now see a limited range of layout elements in the layout elements tab including both a postcard cart and a postcard image element. As the name suggests, the postcard cart element allows you to add an add to cart section into a postcard, which you could then use on a custom shop page, allowing users to add a product to the cart directly from the shop. This even works with variable products, and we can see it in action at the bottom of the postcard here. Then there's the postcard image element. This element allows you to add an image to a postcard and will automatically pull the featured image. It also has specific Woo features, so it's great for Woo shop postcards. You can also add an image element with dynamic content as has been done here, but it will just depend on what you are looking for. If I add the postcard image here, we can see that there are a few layout styles, including a crossfade and a rollover effect. There are also other specific Woo features like showing categories, price, ratings, sales and out of stock badges, so it's particularly good for Woo commerce postcards. But you can of course also use it for other post type postcards as well. Ok, let's go back to the content layout section and continue with the other layout section elements. The post meta element is the next layout element. This element allows you to add a customizable meta section into your post content, as you can see here. You can enable or disable a range of meta information, including the most recently modified date of a post, as well as word count and reading time and there is a design tab with which you can style the content as you wish. If I just center it and add a bit of top margin, I can imagine using this in this layout. Project details comes after this and you would only use this on a portfolio single post layout. It's the portfolio details that we would normally see down the right hand side of a portfolio item, like skills and categories and URL etc. It has a few basic design and animation options. Related posts is the last layout element before the Woo ones, and this will work with all single posts, and show posts related to the currently viewed post. You will often see this element at the bottom of a post layout like this. It's absent in this layout, but if I just add it after the comments element, and reduce the number of columns to two, we can see how it might be used. It has three tabs, general design and extras, and a reasonably large range of options for configuration and styling including two layouts and a range of navigational options. Ok, the rest of the layout elements are specific Woo elements for single product layouts. To best view these, let's come back to Avada Layouts and edit the content layout section on the single product layout. Wow, that's nice. What a great colour palette. If we look at the navigator here, we can see that this layout section is using many Woo layout elements, as well as another layout element in the form of the content element, and several other design elements as well. 
The Woo Notices element has been placed at the top of the layout here, and while this is a design element, you can still use it here in a single product layout. There are currently 20 Woo layout elements, all with a specific purpose. The first of these, the Woo Add to Cart element, displays in this area of the layout. The element has five tabs in all, and a massive number of options, and as such makes the Add to Cart area completely customizable for all types of products, including variable products like this. In this layout, there's even a second instance of this element just for small screens. The next layout element is the additional information element. It's also part of the Woo Tabs element, but you can also use the Woo additional information element to display this product information separately if you wish. It has a general, design and extras tab, providing a lot of customization options to display this info where and how you want. Woo Archives is a layout element for product archives, and like the archives element, you could also use postcards and the postcards element for this for more flexibility. But for a basic product archive layout, this will do the trick. The next four layout elements go together. They are the Woo Filter Active element, the Woo Filter by Attribute element, the Woo Filter by Price element, and the Woo Filter by Rating element. They are not set up on this pre-built, but usually these will be in a column, and users can use them to filter the products as they wish. See the How to Use the Avada WooCommerce Filter Elements video for specific details on how to use these very cool layout elements. Ok, moving on, there is another set of elements that can be used together. The Woo Order Additional Info element, the Woo Order Customer Details element, the Woo Order Details element, the Woo Order Downloads element, and the Woo Order Table element are designed to be used on a WooCommerce Thank You Page layout, and together give a summary of a user's order. See the How to Create a Custom WooCommerce Thank You Page documentation and video for more information on these specific layout elements. Woo Price is the next layout element, and in this layout it is used just under the main title here. It displays the price of the product of course, but can also display sales price, a discount badge, and even stock levels. It has a full range of design options for font, colour, and placement. Woo Product Images is the next layout element. In this layout section, the main featured product image is being pulled into the background of the column dynamically, with the other product images displayed in a gallery in the section below. If I just remove this background image, and add the Woo Product Images element here, we can get an idea of how this one looks. It can display single images, as well as any product gallery images added, and has a range of options controlling layout and thumbnails. It can even display a sales badge if the product is discounted. Ok, I might just return that to how it was. The Woo Rating element comes next, and this can be used simply to display the product's ratings as can be seen here above the main title. It's a pretty simple element with all the options you would need. Ok, the Woo Related Products element follows this. Related products are products in the same product category, or ones that share tags. In this layout, the related products are being displayed by a postcard down the bottom here. If I just add the Woo Related Products element for comparison, it loads below, and we can see it can be displayed as columns or as a carousel, and you can configure the number of products and columns, as well as a number of navigational options if you use it as a carousel. Ok, let's just remove that. The Woo Reviews element is the next layout element, and has been used in this layout just above the related products here. Reviews are also part of the Woo Tabs element, but just like the additional information element, the reviews element can be added as a standalone element when needed, and offers a full range of customization options. The Woo Short Description element is perhaps the simplest of all the layout elements, and displays exactly what it says. We can see it here just above the Woo Add to Cart element, and it has only a few unique design options. The Woo Stock element is not used in this layout, as the price element is displaying the stock levels, but again if you want to display them on their own, this element does that and it has a few basic options for size, colour, and margins. The Woo Tabs element is the last of the layout elements, and isn't used on this pre-built either. If I just add it under the Reviews element here, and just style it a bit so we can see it better, we can see it has the option to display up to three tabs in a horizontal or vertical layout. The full product description, additional information, and reviews. It has a full range of colour, text, and font settings on the design tab. Ok, for specific details and a full rundown of the options of any of these layout elements, please see the Avada Elements doc linked below, which links to the individual element docs for all elements available in Avada. To wrap up, let's just look at this product in the front end. 
the layout has created a very striking product page. Here's the gallery now displaying the other product images. And if we add some of this to our cart, we get the appropriate notice displaying at the top. OK, that's it for the Avada layout elements. As you can see, they are very useful in a variety of situations and allow you to take your site designs to the next level. This concludes our video on how to use the Avada layout elements. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.